The law, see, the old covenant's not a faith. But the man that doeth these things shall live by them. Yeah. The Messiah has redeemed us from the curse he of the law. He redeemed us. He freed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for Being us. Being made a curse for us. For it is written. For it is written. Curse. And it's on a tree. That them that dieth on a tree. That and that's in Deuteronomy 22 20. And you have to use that for that three days, three nights thing. Read on. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. The to the blessing might come to the Gentiles who were never given no old covenant. We're coming in by the promise. Read. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise of the Spirit through faith. You see the difference there? One Spirit. One's faith, the other one's law, and it's fleshly. You're doing physical things. Read. Brethren, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet, if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth it, for are added thereto. Now Abraham and his seed were the promise made. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. Read. He said not unto seeds. Plural. Not to seeds, plural. It's not to the physical Israelites. Read. But to thy seed. Thy seed. Singular. Which is Yahshua the Messiah. Oh, it's about Yahshua that you can be blessed. Read. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before Yahweh <coughs> in the Messiah, the law which came 430 years after. See, the promise that was given to Abraham, this law came 430 years after this. We cannot disannul. The law does not disannul the promise. It's the promise that all the families are going to be blessed, not the law. People don't even know what the promise is. He read on. That he should make the promise of none effect. And that law that came 430 years later, which is supposed to be written right there. <laughs> the law that came 430 years later could not disannul the promise. That it would make it none effect, like the promise don't mean nothing. Read. For if the inheritance be by the law, if the inheritance is by the old law, by the old no law, more by promise. that's not by promise. Is that plain? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Read. But Yahweh gave it to Abraham by promise. Yahweh gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serve the law? Why do you serve the law? It was added because of transgression. Oh, what, 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 why was the law given? Because of transgression. It was added because of transgression. <laughs> Yahweh was pointing out sin, showing you needed a savior. Mm -hmm. That's why it's added. Did you know that's why it's added? No, not by reading back there. Read. Till the promise was made. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Yeah. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Okay, read on. No, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but Yahweh is one. Is the law then against the promise of Yahweh? Is law against the promise of Yahweh? By no means. No. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily, righteousness should have been by the law. That's right. But the scripture had concluded all under sin. All was under sin. That the promise by faith of Yahshua the Messiah might be given to them that believe. Read. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Say before Yahshua came, that's faith. Shut up, un shut up unto faith which should be revealed afterwards. Read. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. The to, law was our schoolmaster. To bring us unto the Messiah. To lead you to the Messiah. That we might be justified by that faith. That should be justified by faith. But after faith is but come. But after Yahshua has come, faith. We are no longer under school You're master. no longer under the law or the schoolmaster. For you are all the children of Yahweh by faith. You're Yahweh all the children of Yahweh by faith in Yahshua's Messiah. Read. For as many of you as have been baptized in the Messiah have put on the Messiah. Mm -hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Neither is there one nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Yahshua the Messiah. Read. And if the Messiah be, in, and if you be the Messiahs, then you are Abraham's seed. So if you've got the Holy Spirit, you're Abraham's seed. And ears Heirs according, according to the promise. Now read 4 and 4, Galatians. Verse 4 and 4. But when the fullness of time was come, Yahweh sent forth his son. Sent his son. Made of a woman. Made of a woman. Made subject to the law. Made subject to the law. He to was redeem, under the old covenant. That's not the New Testament. Read. To redeem them. That to redeem them. That means free them from that law. 
Read. That we might receive the adoption of sons. The adoption of sons. Read. <laughs> and because you are sons, Yahweh has sent for the spirit of his son into your heart. Now that's how you become a son, is the Holy Spirit being poured out. Not by... Okay, get 22. <laughs> Verse 22? Yeah. Verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons. Had two sons. The one by a bondmaid. The one by a bondmaid. And the other by a free woman. One by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. It's Galatians 4. Read. But he of the free woman was by the promise. The one by the free woman was by the promise. Read. Which things are allegory. It's an allegory. The two sons of Abraham are allegory. For these are the two covenants. He's calling those the two sons of Abraham the two covenants. <coughs> the one from Mount Sinai. The one Mount Sinai, the law spoken down. Which gathered to bondage. To bondage. Hagar. He's calling that Hagar. <laughs> Flesh. Read. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Yeah. An answer to Jerusalem. Now you need a visual revelation to see that. Read. And is in bondage with her children. Yeah. You're, but, read. But Jerusalem, which is above, is uh, free. Jerusalem above is free. Which is mother of us all. Why is Jerusalem above the mother of us all? Because now you receive the Holy Spirit to Jew and Gentile. Right? <laughs> That's the mother. Because we're being born of the Spirit now. Okay. Above Jerusalem, above. Right. And under the law, it was Jerusalem beneath. You got to come up higher. There's a heavenly Jerusalem now. Mm -hmm. And it's through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did that help some? <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah. We threw some different things in there because yeah. he had a question. That's good. But there's more. We ain't even got started yet. Time always kills us. <laughs> but hey, it's fine. Sometimes you can't take it all in. Yeah. Okay, all praise go to Yahweh and to his son Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Could you speak up? Brands Lambston. Thank you. 
This is the bronze leaf. No. This is the oil. This is the sacrificial altar. This is the bronze leaf. This is the oil. This is the blood sugar. This is the seven branch lamp staff. <coughs> this is the altar of incense. Mm -hmm. This is the ark of the covenant. This is yesterday. Intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, justice, beauty, form, pollution, and strength. This is super and proper from Cheryl and Beauty and Richards. consists of three-dimensional pattern. This pattern is the original pattern of everything that exists, both visible and invisible. It has an outer, a middle, and an upper. It is also called the outer quartz, or also rectangular embodiment around. And also known, here is known as the holy place, and then here as the most holy place. This pattern is a universal pattern. It also has a scientific meaning which speaks of transmutation, abstract, intermediate, and concrete. Represent also a pattern of a spirit, water, and blood. And you can find that in the three compartments. Also has to do with the name Yahweh and the title Elohim and Yahshua, Father, Word, and Spirit. It also has to do with the operation of atoms as protons, neutrons, and electrons. And so it compasses everything that exists, both visible and invisible. Then Yahweh is really from this state known as the Yosophy, translated by theologians or scholars as Theosophy. But it's Yosophy which speaks of Yahweh's attributes of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, justice, beauty, foundation, power, and strength. It speaks of Yahweh being the source and the substance of all things, his exposition, as love, wisdom, joy, knowledge, peace, faith, patience, healing, kindness, power, goodness, prophecy, faithfulness, discern of spirit, neatness, tongue, self-control, <coughs> Then Yahweh transformed into a pattern known as a supernal nature or super-incorporeal form. This super-incorporeal form speaks of also a metamorphosis form that only can be seen in a vision and revelation, a set-apart vision and revelation, seen by the prophets, seen by Adam as the tree of life in the garden, and seen also by Anok, that Anok walked with this pattern until he was taken out of the physical life. This pattern was seen by Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abayu, and 70 elders on Mount Sinai. Then from this pattern also, it was manifested in a physical flesh, justified in the spirit and seen by angels, preached unto the Gentiles as Yahshua, or Mashiach. 
Yahshua the Anointed One, or Yahshua the Messiah. This form also was seen by the apostles or the emissaries, Peter, James, and John, also by the apostle Shuhat or Paul, <coughs> then by John on the Isles of Patmos in 96 AD. He was also seen in 1931 by Dr. Henry Kipper King in the state of Hawaii. As we explained, this form then transforming parts, not in totality, into a cosmogony state. This cosmogony state here speaks of the generation or the creation of the heavens and of the earth. We know that Yahweh transformed from that state into the law, which is the source and substance of things invisible and both visible, known as the spirit law, or Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua's law which makes a division between spirit and matter in eternity. Then a division between spirit matter into eon, atoms, the electrons, neutrons, and protons of inorganic molecular structure of melted lava in the center of the earth. This same formation in part, not in totality, into what we call chaosis. And as we explain, into the pattern into cosmic light, separate the waters from the waters, perfectation of vegetation, season, summer, spring, winter, and fall, and the biological kingdom of birds, fishes, and creeping things. Then into the state of man, male and female. The pattern has been revealed again. Then we recognize disobedience to that pattern lead to angelic transgression. Transgression in the garden of Eden between Adam and his wife Eve. Then Cain slew his brother and started his own kingdom of damnation. Being possessed with this mark, which was Lucifer, the first human vessel to be possessed with evil spirit. But Yahweh raised a man from the ground by the name of Anna, who came up of the lineage of Adam to reestablish righteousness. Through his lineage came this man known as Noah, who won generation after generation, 120 years. He established the pattern of the ark, which consists really of nine tabernacle patterns. Then Yahweh allowed him to escape the flood with his family, started the post diluvian age. Then we recognize after that period he enjoyed life with his family and died old age. We recognize that how Babel was established with a satanic foundation and build and build until Yahweh's spirit law came and confused it, showing us the destiny of everything that is satanic. At the beginning, ultimately will come to a ruin at the end, showing us that we should build only in Yahweh. As the scripture said, if Yahweh build not the house, they who labor, labor in vain. Then we recognize that Yahweh established a relationship with Abraham to fulfill his promise. And Abraham brought forth his first son after he was tried or tested. Tempted, the word tempted means to be tested or tried. And so he took his only son, <coughs> to offer, which represents the blood offering a type and shadow, but a ram was caught in the tickle, showing us that Yah will never allow the righteous to be tempted above that they cannot bear, but with the temptation will always make a way of escape. Mm -hmm. Then we recognize that that blood was shed. Also, Abraham perspired within himself. His son also perspired. The angel appeared to him, which is spiritual, and the vision that he received from Yahweh of his only begotten son who should come in the future. Then here we recognize that it was fulfilled blood, water, and here spirit. And the 40, that Yahweh fulfilled that 40 in this state with Abraham presenting his gift to Melchizedek, king of Salem and of priests, representing the Jubilee, 
after the fall. <coughs> then we take into consideration the children of Israel down into Egypt in bondage. After that, they went after the sacrifice of the Passover through the Red Sea into the wilderness, where they spent 40 years, round and round and round and round, until the fulfillment. Also a type and shadow of we going around and around inside of the womb of our mother until we are conceived, or should say delivered into the promise of the future, which represent the Canaan land, the migratory path. Then we recognize that Solomon built a temple which was furnished with these principles also. Here we have within the temple Entering through the gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and into our courts with praise. Being thankful unto Yahweh and bless his name, for Yahweh is good and his mercy is everlasting. And his sure or his truth endure to all generations. Sacrifice was here. A type and shadow of Yahshua who should be our sacrificial lamb. Isaiah 53, who was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes were made here. Then we recognize all the washing represent the washing, regeneration, and renewing of Yahshua. The anointing which we have received of everything else, and we have no need that anyone teach us anything, but the same anointing teach us all things, which is Yahshua the Spirit. We recognize the protection of his assembly, revealed in chapter 1, to the seven assemblies in Asia. To the seven Yahweh Elohim Yahshua assembly. Then we recognize the altar of incense which speaks of Yahweh in the ceiling for us. The table of Shukran, which represents the twelve loaves, a type and shadow of the twelve tribes of Israel, and also the twelve apostles, as in the apostles' doctrine, are food for our spiritual digestion. Then we recognize entering into this veil to Yahshua's flesh, our Elohim's flesh. And Yahshua in the soul, in the body, showing us entering into this state where we have the heart of this agreement or arrangement. Usually we say covenant. We recognize it represents at the lower part here in this part we have the bread on one side. And on the opposite side we have the rod, which represents right ruling. The bread that speaks of the hidden word. And in the center we have the Ten Commandments, which speaks of the law. So we have three major principles here. And then up here we have an angel on the left and an angel on the right. And in the center we have the mercy seat. So we have three principles here. And then Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahshua, will be the source and the substance of the vision of the truth of this priest. So here we have three here, three here, and three here, showing us the pattern of Yahweh divine attributes in us. Then we have history. History which conceived of the principle of Babylon, Medes and the Persian, Grecian, Alexander the Greek, so-called Alexander the Great, then pagan Rome and Papa Rome being re-established even in this very day that we live in. But it will be a catastrophe at the universal revelation of Yahshua which the stone the Bible reject. Acts chapter 4 Verse 10. This Yahshua who you crucified, Yahweh raised from the dead. This is the stone that was set at naught. Why this man has been standing here bold. And so there is no other name given among men whereby we must be delivered. But by the name Yahshua. And here we have the deliverance, the conception, the deliverance and flight of Yahshua. So-called birth. That he was conceived in you and was delivered from Miriam or Mary. Then we have the return of Yahshua as a type and shadow of a memorial back into the land. And then we recognize Yahshua fulfilling the temple of this principle. Here he was teaching the precept of the 40 days law of the children of Israel down in the wilderness and what Moses learned down here is 613 commands. And then here he was teaching about the spirit law that should govern. Moses' law, 
then we recognize that Joshua here in his ministry to fear as a body to be the ultimate sacrifice for our sin, the perpetuation for our sins. And so we recognize he was challenged in the wilderness for 40 days as we recognize and overcame. Not as the children of Israel who failed the test of the 40 in the wilderness, but he stood firm, showing us that he is the source and substance that we should follow. No other but Joshua. He never failed. And so he had served on a wonderful ministry. And so he manifested the source and substance of who he was. His miracles being demonstrated with his vision and revelation came signs. Vision and revelation. I heard a voice from him. And the signs shall follow. We recognize he transfigured before them into the super incorporeal form to show them who he really was. Peter, James, and John. And they saw the Elohim of Israel again, just like how they saw it here in 1490 BBY. They saw that same pattern again here. And so it was a testament for them. But we recognize that Joshua had to be put to death in that body. The body died on that tree. And Joshua was buried in that body then resurrected out of that body. Same day, <coughs> ascending to the temple and rip the veil and smite Lucifer to fulfill and will bruise his head and he shall bruise his feet and the earth shook. Then we recognize Yahshua appeared to his disciples. The one and John part 4,000 and all those who look for him after his resurrection, the graves were open. And they also appeared to the Old Testament patriarchs. And Yahshua appeared to his disciples and then spent 40 days with them. And they were sending 50 days he returned back as the Pentecost into their souls and minds. After he told us to part and wait for that call, you shall receive goodness. <coughs> or explosion of the operation of Yashu. The Greek word is the paraphil, coming from the paraphil, or in the Hebrew, Roach. And then they went forth to be missionaries of Yashu and was persecuted. He saw what took place with Stephen during the persecution. But because they were sealed with the spirit of Yashu, they had no fear of death. Being sealed with the spirit of Yahshua speaks of the Pentecost. Grieve not Yahshua, for whereby you are sealed with him unto the day of redemption. Eternal salvation. Once saved, <coughs> always saved. Then we recognize that others were put to death. Jacob or James was put to death by her. And also we recognize that the rest of the disciples were strengthened. And so they went in pursuit of witnessing to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were grafted in the Cornelius and his household. And the rest of the Gentile race came to know Yahshua. Peter was locked up in prison. Yahshua, who is the truth and the life, the beginning and the ending. We have no fear. For whatsoever he has started in the spiritual will be accomplished in the physical. And if we are with Yahshua, we will forever be with Yahshua in the eternal state. Then we recognize in this place, it explains of the three who be a record, the Spirit, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And the three are one, not a trinity, but a unity. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is one, or a unity. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 6, one Elohim. And so there must be one Yahweh. And so there must be one Yashua. So we give thanks for Dr. King who was possessed with Yashua and not with Dr. King to prove that there is only one Yashua. 
Here we have clip number 37, which speaks of the mystery of iniquity. Carnal ordinance is being re-established. Bread, wine symbolizing blood, water baptism. And also these four major principles of religion. Catholics, the Jews, the Protestants, and world religion. Then we recognize that this principle continues here. We are trying to have a jubilee, but it's not more but a damnation of the mystery of the And Yahweh pours out darkness in this state. Then here we have what we call the universal revelation of Yahshua. From this realm, Yahshua presents infinity or immortality for his servants. And casting the souls. Revelation 21 verse 8, the fearful, the unbelievers, whoremongers, sorcerers, liars, and murderers shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns, which brings to which is the second death. Spiritually alive, but spiritually separated from God, our enemy, Russia. And here we have the earth being destroyed. Second Peter chapter 3, every element, every atom, every matter, every inorganic molecular structure of molten lava is consumed by fire, the heavens and the earth. And so we'll have a new heaven and a new earth state, new formation, and Joshua will be in us as of all in all. Yahweh our Elohim Yahshua. Be all the praise. Mm -hmm. All praise to Yahshua. Elohim Yahweh. Shall not marry abroad unto a stranger. Okay, now you would think 
if you were thinking about the way things are today in, in modern societies, that, hey, once that woman's husband's dead, she can marry anybody she wants, right? right? But that's not the way Yahweh had it under the law, because what he's doing, he's setting up type shadow and allegory about his kingdom and about his son, Yahshua, who's going to be the king of kings, okay? So here's what is required. The wife of the dead shall not marry abroad, but what will happen? Her husband's brother shall go in unto her. Now her husband's brother, the one that dwelt with him, right? If men dwell together, okay? All right, then the husband's brother shall go in unto her. And take her, take her to him. And wife, take her to him as his wife. And perform the duty of a husband brother unto her. And perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. Okay? What does this mean? This means that what he has to do, well, let's finish it. We don't have a lot of time, so let's finish the reading. And it shall be. That the firstborn which she bear it shall succeed in the name of his brother, which is dead. That so, his name be not put out of Israel. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So in other words, then the firstborn child is actually going to be the successor and the inheritor of all the property and the name of the deceased brother. So that the name of the deceased brother will have continuance, a symbol of <laughs> eternal life. Okay? All right. Now, that sounds like a very strange practice, doesn't it, yeah. for today? Yeah. But that's the way Yahweh had it back there. And there's, just as a quick note, there was, that was a practice that was used. Yahweh incorporated it into the law. That's a practice that was used by those people even before Yahweh gave the Old Covenant law. And some of you may if sometime want to go back and read about a man named Onan, okay? And Onan, uh, his brother died without children, and what he did was refuse to impregnate his brother's widow, okay? And because of that, then Yahweh was very unhappy with Onan's instruction, okay? But anyway, so the point here is, this is a practice that is not there for the purpose of you and me trying to imitate for righteousness sake. Okay? This is something Yahweh put in the law, but why did he put it there? He put it there to show about Yahshua and his kingdom. Right. And Yahshua had to fulfill that. Now what do we mean? Okay. Dr. Lewis was showing how that Yahshua the Messiah was, well, he was talking about the, the, the physical body of Yahshua that died and the spirit that raised, right? Which was back over in Romans 7. And I'm, I'm going to want to go to Romans 7 again. But you see, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were all in this one body, right? This was the fullness of the Godhead body, okay? Now, he was showing how that Yahweh married Israel back here under the Old Covenant. Now, because of the fact that Israel was unfaithful and because of the fact that she always had to continuously offer up sin sacrifices. And they, that goes through sin sacrifices to be part of the shedding of blood, right? Israel was like a menstruous woman. Now, a menstruous woman cannot conceive. Right? You understand what I'm saying? So all the time, that Yahweh was married to Israel back here, she was barren. And that's why you have also in the Bible several events, stories about barren women and Yahweh miraculously causing them to bear and bring forth a son. Okay? All right? But Israel is barren back here in this relationship with Yahweh and she, as he said, was, you know, went around, they were pouring with every other god that they could, all those kinds of things. They were unfaithful to Yahweh, okay? Now, Yahshua the Messiah, who was Yahweh manifest in that body, he is the one that is going to fulfill the requirements 
that Israel was unable to do. And I don't have time to read it, so I'm going to mention another scripture back in the Old Testament. Okay? That's Numbers 30, and I think it's verse 4. Okay, back there. But what I'm heading toward there is the fact that if a husband hears his wife make a vow, right. and he does not disannul that vow at that time, then the husband confirms the vow that the wife has made, and he has to stand by it. Right. Right. So Yahweh heard Israel make a vow back here, see, just like he showed that all the words that Yahweh has said will we do and be obedient, right? So they made that marriage vow on the Yahweh, but they did not keep the vow. Right. So what happens? The husband, which is really Yahweh, and Yahweh is in this body of Yahshua, he comes in down here after she's had 1,500 years to keep the vow, 1,500 years to try and bear a child in the name of Yahweh. Or in other words, bring forth fruit to the kingdom that Yahweh established back here. And she can't do it. Okay, Yahshua the Messiah comes in and he fulfills the vow that the woman made. You understand what I'm saying? He does everything that she agreed to do and couldn't do it. So he fulfills it. Not so that she can continue to do it, but so that her vow is now finished. And she is no longer under that vow. Now when you go back to Romans 7, which he read, okay, there it says that the Israel is now become dead to the law. How? By the body of Yahshua, that she, Israel, should marry anybody she wants? No. no. Because he's, oh, he's going according to that same law. That she should be married to another, even to him that raised from the dead. So, Yahweh was in that body. Joshua was in that body. I'm using that as a way of understanding this. And then, he died for her. Released her from the Old Testament. Fulfilled her vow in order to do it. Okay, Paid the price that was required by his blood. Right. Ended that entire relationship. Freed her from that marriage which would never work. And then he, as a spirit man, raised from the dead and married Israel after the spirit on the day of Pentecost. It's now not a marriage based on carnal ordinances. It's a marriage of spirit to spirit based on the law of the spirit with him putting his spirit in her and that shows the way Yahweh set the law up, the way he fulfilled it, and the way he is now bringing it to a spiritual fulfillment. And who is the one that is born under the new covenant? Every son of Yahweh that is born of the Spirit is a soul that is born again and bears the name Yahweh as his son, Yahshua. And we are all now Married unto Yahshua, we receive his name if we believe in him. And we're his children. So I hope that's of some help. Yeah. <laughs>